my dear students assalamu alaikum and welcome to your online class today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the gastrointestinal reflexes now there are three types of gastrointestinal reflexes that are necessary for gastrointestinal control now let's look at the reflexes the, there are reflexes that are integrated entirely within the gut wall enteric nervous system. We know that the gastrointestinal tract has a nervous system of its own that is known as the enteric nervous system. And these reflexes control gastric secretion, peristalsis, mixing movement and also some local inhibitory effects. The next reflexes are the reflexes that originate from the gut and then they go to the prevertebral sympathetic ganglia and then again back to the gastrointestinal tract. These reflexes are very important and they transmit signals long distances to other areas of the tract. Now let us see what are these reflexes. These are the gastrocolic reflex enterogastric reflex and colonoileal reflex. The gastrocolic reflex is one of the important ones that send signals from the stomach and these signals uh, from the stomach they go to the colon to cause evacuation of the colon. This gastrocolic reflex is very prominent in infants. Next we have the enterogastric reflex. Signals from the small intestine to inhibit the stomach uh, motility and stomach secretion. So, you can understand from the name it is enterogastric reflex that means it is coming from the small intestine to the stomach to decrease the stomach motility and secretion. Next is the colonoileal reflex that sends signals from the colon to inhibit the emptying of the ileal contents into the colon. And the third type of reflexes are the reflexes from the gut to the spinal cord and then back to the GI tract. These are also important and one of the most important ones is the defecation reflex which we will discuss in details in this lecture. So, one is the defecation reflex and then we have reflexes from the stomach and duodenum to the brainstem and then back to the stomach via the vagus nerve uh, to control the gastric motility and secretion. And these reflexes also include pain reflexes that cause general inhibition of the entire GI tract. So, these are our gastrointestinal reflexes that are controlling the GIT activity. Next, let us go into details about the defecation reflex. So, the defecation reflex is a spinal reflex that initiates defecation and it is two types. One is intrinsic defecation reflex which is a weaker one and then we have a strong parasympathetic defecation reflex. Now, let us take a look at the intrinsic defecation reflex. It is a relatively weak reflex and it is mediated by the enteric nervous system, especially the particularly the myenteric plexus. What happens here? First, the feces enter the rectum and this causes distension of the rectal wall. We know that there are some stretch receptors that are present in the wall of the rectum. So, when there is distension of the rectum by feces, these stretch receptors are stimulated. And once the stretch receptors are stimulated, they stimulate the myentary plexus. And this initiate peristalsis in the descending colon, the sigmoid colon and rectum. And these peristalsis propels the feces forward towards the anus. Internal anal sphincter relaxes. The internal anal sphincter, we know it is the uh, formed by smooth muscle and it is involuntary. And there is also an external anal sphincter which is voluntary. And so there are two sphincters and first the internal anal sphincter relaxes. At the same time, if the external anal sphincter voluntarily relaxes, then defecation will take place. External anal sphincter 
will relax if the situation is favorable and external anal sphincter is controlled by the higher centers. So, uh, even though the internal anal sphincter is relaxed, if the situation is not favorable, then external anal sphincter will not relax and in that case, defecation will not occur. So, this is the intrinsic defecation reflex and fortifying this intrinsic ref defecation reflex we have the parasympathetic defecation reflex so parasympathetic defecation reflex is a strong reflex that strengthens the intrinsic defecation reflex and it involves the sacral segments of the spinal cord so what is the mechanism that is working here here again there is distension of the rectum stimulating the nerve endings and when the rectum is distended actually the longitudinal uh, muscles of the rectum contract and this shortens the rectum and it also increases the pressure in the rectum so these two factors together stimulates the nerve endings and then the signals are transmitted to the spinal cord by the afferent nerves and then from the spinal cord uh, the signals are integrated in the sacral segments of the spinal cord. Then reflex signals via the pelvic nerve goes to the descending colon, sigmoid colon and rectum. Note here that the efferent fibers are going via the parasympathetic fibers and they are going to the same descending colon, sigmoid colon and rectum and these parasympathetic signals greatly intensifies the peristalsis that is already stimulated or initiated by the myentary plexus and uh, so there are two uh, reflexes working together here one is our intrinsic defecation reflex which is weak and strengthening this intrinsic defecation reflex is the parasympathetic defecation reflex so two reflexes are working here and the internal anal sphincter is relaxed and uh, then the fecal matter is uh, moving forward towards the anus uh, towards the anus and at the same time if the external anal sphincter is voluntarily relaxed by the higher centers then defecation will take place. So this is the defecation reflex which is important for your oral examination and also for your written examination. Let us take a look at a video about the defecation reflex and as we already know the defecation reflex is an involuntary response to the lower bowels to various stimuli. So, uh, whenever when the whenever there is a distension of the rectum with feces then the defecation reflex is stimulated so when feces enter the rectum from the sigmoid colon the stretch receptors in the walls of the uh, rectal wall are stimulated then they send signals to the sacral segments of the spinal cord and then the parasympathetic nerves are going back parasympathetic signals are coming to the descending colon the sigmoid colon the rectum and the anus so these parasympathetic signals are causing strong peristalsis and resulting in contraction of the longitudinal muscles of the rectum the rectum shortens and the pressure in the rectum increases next what happens is uh, uh, three factors are playing role together one is the pressure in the rectum then we have the parasympathetic stimulation and then we have voluntary contraction of the diaphragm these three factors working together will cause uh, to defecation next the external anal sphincter which is uh, under voluntary control is relaxed if it is relaxed by the higher centers then feces are expelled through the anus if the external anal sphincter is not relaxed that means it is constricted then defecation is postponed so in this way uh, the voluntarily the external anal sphincter can be controlled and defecation can be postponed 
next what happens is uh, let's see a flow chart about how all this is working together so first there is the mass movement mass movement is a specialized type of peristalsis that occurs in the large intestine and mass movement leads to defecation reflex the stimulus for defecation reflex is distension in the rectum and the responses are contraction in the rectum, sigmoid colon, relaxation of the internal anal sphincter and contraction of the external anal sphincter. Then there is increased pressure in the rectum. If there is ex uh, relaxation of the external anal sphincter and relaxation of the puborectalis muscle, then there is forward peristalsis in the rectum and sigmoid colon and also there is increased intraabdominal pressure which is known as the valsalva maneuver. So these will lead to defecation and if the conditions are not favorable then there will be a delay. So there will be contraction of the external anal sphincter, contraction of the puborectalis muscle and reverse peristalsis in the rectum. Next what will happen? So, the reverse peristalsis will postpone the defecation process. So, we can see that our defecation process is under the control of the autonomic nervous system and also the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system includes the intrinsic myenteric defecation reflex and the parasympathetic defecation reflex. The somatic nervous system is the voluntary control that controls the external anal sphincter. Next, uh, intrinsic defecation reflex as we have already seen that when the feces enter the rectum, there is distension of the rectal walls and that initiates signals through the myenteric plexus, initiate peristaltic waves in the descending colon, sigmoid colon and rectum. Feces propels towards the anus and internal anal sphincter is relaxed. If the external anal sphincter is relaxed also, then defecation will take place. So this is the intrinsic defecation reflex. Parasympathetic defecation reflex involves the sacral segments of the spinal cord and this causes intri uh, intensifies our intrinsic defecation reflex. There are also some factors that aid in defecation. These factors are voluntary contraction of the diaphragm and abdominal muscles, then which increases the pressure in the abdomen and pushes the sigmoid colon and rectal wall inwards. So this aids in the process of defecation. Next, if defecation does not occur, then what happens? Then feces are back up into the sigmoid colon until the next wave of mass peristalsis takes place. And this again stimulates the stretch receptors and creates the urge to defecate. So this is a, a diagram showing the defecation reflex pathway which involves autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. Then in infants the defecation reflex is under autonomic control. So this is very important that in the infants uh, the voluntary control of the external anal sphincter is not developed. So they are un only under the autonomic control. Next, uh, what happens if there are some abnormalities in the defecation? There may be diarrhea when the chyme passes too fast and the water is not absorbed and there may be constipation when uh, there is less motility and more water is reabsorbed. So in case of constipation, uh, the time that the feces remains in the colon is longer and the amount of water uh, absorbed is increased. So, there is constipation and the cause of constipation can be delaying the normal defecation process, spasm of the colon, lack of exercise, lack of dietary fibers or there may be some emotional stress. So, these are the factors that may lead to constipation. So, this is all for today and uh, defecation reflex. I hope I could give you a clear idea about the process. So, thank you and Allah.